and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton. And today, Mayor Donnie Tuck is here, and he's going to tell us about this year's Hampton Jazz Festival. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you for having me. And I'm already going to say I said something wrong, because this year the name is not Hampton Jazz Festival. It's actually the Hampton Jazz and Music Festival. And why, what prompted that change? I think the primary reason is that we're trying to reach a different demographic. We're trying to broaden the appeal of the Jazz and Music Festival. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, too, it's really an acknowledgement. I mean, it has shifted over the years and has had always a heavy component of R&B and some other things. And this year, it has a little bit of a world music component as well with John Baptiste. So it's really an acknowledgement of something that's already happened. That is true. And I think when you talk about something that's been around for 54 years, there might be a need to change some things around. Right. Well, the New Orleans Jazz Festival is New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival now. I mean, I think a lot of people who run these realize that musical tastes are varied and you can learn and enjoy different styles as well. Obviously. And I actually believe, as you said, that the, um, the type of music that has been uh, on display in the past has really had more of an R&B flavor for some individuals. And they're, of course, your jazz purists mm -hmm. uh, who complain about some of the artists no longer being there. But I think several years ago, it probably changed to try and bring in a different demographic. Yeah, so it'll be fun this year. I am not, you said younger demographic. I am not familiar <laughs> with all of the artists. I will say, John Baptiste on Sunday, I think is a huge draw. And I know so many people that would just love to see him. He has, he's really varied his music um, and done some really interesting things recently. Well, see, now I've been put on the spot in the past uh, when asked <laughs> about the artists, and I will tell you that I'm not as knowledgeable about some of the artists as perhaps others are. Um, I, I prefer guitar, and so one of the people who really appeals to me is Kingfish. That's his nickname, mm -hmm. and I've only seen him on YouTube, but he is an outstanding guitarist. And so that's one of the artists I'm looking forward to. And if my wife can go with me, then I think Kim is probably another artist I'm looking forward to hearing. And Kim is sort of a smooth R&B kind of... Probably too smooth, but yes, very, very, <laughs> very, oh, I very, see. very, very, very smooth. Appeals to the ladies, you're yes, saying? Yes yes, 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 that's a certain type with, of... With lines for the men. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've been... How long have you been going to the jazz festival? Like, certainly actually, I know since you've been mayor, but... Yes, uh, but actually uh, started in 2010, I think when I got on council, and actually we were beneficiaries of... Of, of free tickets, complimentary tickets. Well, you got to be there. You got to see people. I mean, this is a huge, huge tourism draw for Hampton. It is. It is. And I think there are a number of individuals who plan um, their summers around that last full weekend of June. Uh, this year it's June 28th through the 30th, but plan their, their, their vacations and other kinds of activities around the uh, Jazz and Music Festival. Oh, there's after parties, there's before parties, there's parties in hotels. There are people who host, you know, dozens of friends who come back into town for this. It's always just a big thing. That is correct. And I've actually had uh, family members from North Carolina uh, ask me about tickets, and I think maybe five or six years, years ago, and I know it was pre-COVID, so I have to try and figure out when it was. Right. But my wife had family from Mississippi to come. That is so wonderful. Well, who who have been, you know, maybe one of your favorite artists that you've heard over the years? Well, I would say probably Frankie Beverly, for one. Um, I, I just like, again, the guitar, and then he's really a smooth performer. Um, but I would also say that the baby face, um, he's, I think he's, he's, he's just a fantastic uh, composer, producer, performer, and uh, again, goes back to guitar. Um, he has um, this guitarist, and also he also plays guitar, but he has this guitarist that just really was um, an outstanding performer, um, just a showman. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'll tell you, I think mine was Gladys Knight, and I had bought tickets because it was supposed to be Aretha Franklin, and she got sick, and I was so disappointed, and I got there, and she lit up the place. I was, it was amazing. I mean, a live performance like that is so different 
Um, I saw Ray Charles, too, and he was quite amazing. But he came on sometime after midnight. I was, okay. I was a little bit asleep. But he woke me up. It was, it's beautiful. Well, I hope I'm not confusing things, but I think I recall seeing Patti LaBelle <gasps> at one of them. Oh, my and, gosh. And she's spectacular. She's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, and again, that sort of gets at the fact that there's been a lot of non-jazz performers and people who are, you know, jazzy or on the line sometimes or mm -hmm. different kinds of things. And it really... It's so interwoven, the music styles these days. That is correct. So now, do you get to be on the committee that picks who's coming? No, no. I'm, I, actually, I think there's a three-part committee that does that, um, Hampton University, which is uh, where it originally ended. Right. How many um, years ago? Back, actually, um, 54 years ago. This is the 54th coming up. Of course, we missed COVID year, mm -hmm. and we missed the year after COVID. Yeah. And it really it encompasses the community. It's it such a wonderful thing. Well, again, I think it points to the partnership that the city has with Hampton University. And um, it's, it's, you know, they've been here since 1868. But uh, if you go back to the jazz festival and music festival, mm -hmm. that um, it has been a great partnership. And, you know, everyone shares in the proceeds. And one of the things we're trying to do this year is to try and ensure that, um, I guess, there, there are more proceeds. Uh, in the past, um, they've actually charged one ticket price for all the seating, regardless of where you sat. And that this just year. meant if you wanted a good seat, you had to you had to buy them the day that opened. Right. And so I think people rushed to buy. Mm -hmm. But this year, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Well, no a problem. New plan. It, but this year, the new plan is that um, they will have uh, different prices for different areas. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Of course, it's, the ticket prices start at 95. Not sure again how that. Um, compares to previous years, but again, people, they, 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 they plan their summers and activities around it, so I think they also plan to save uh, the money for this event. Well, I t concert prices are so high now, like it, it blows my mind, but you also have to think of this as four concerts in one night, so that, you know, y you do think that that's a yes. pretty fair price for that. I, I think that's a good... Um, a good deal, I guess, for your uh, for your investment, mm -hmm. a good return. Well, is there anything else you want to add about the Hampton Jazz and Music Festival? Well, I think the other part, other than the artists, is what it does for our our economy in terms of the, um, you know, we're anticipating some, I think, close to what forty five hundred room nights, and um, the financial impact of that or economic impact. Um, just direct sales with respect to food and lodging and um, and, and amusement the, tax. Yes, yes. Uh, will be somewhere around 1.8 million. So, it's it's not a great number, but still, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a good number. It is. And you have to think. I'm just going to throw this in. Council has spent some money on incentives for getting some of these lovely, nice new hotels. Yes. If you hadn't. A lot of those people would stay in another city. They'd be staying in Newport News, and Newport News would be getting yes. that hotel tax. So people often think, oh, you're spending my money in a way that doesn't benefit me. Well, it does. It just isn't a direct. You may not see that connection. Well, we had a discussion uh, related to our real estate tax rate, and we realized we're heavily dependent on our city on real estate. Mm -hmm. But when you can bring in um, things like the, the Hampton Jazz and Music Festival, and you've got other individuals who are coming in, spending their money, say, staying in our hotels, eating in our restaurants, and um, you know maybe buying other kinds of things, then it takes the pressure off of the resident as right. far as the, uh, the revenues we need from, for the city. Yeah, and, and it doesn't cost us much. They don't need schools. <laughs> yes. They don't need all the really expensive I things that I hate the expression, but they buy. say, hey, they come, they stay, and then they go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We love them. We love them, especially when they come every single year, which yes, so many for sure. of them do. It's a great atmosphere around town it that is. weekend. It is. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mayor, for coming. Thank you for having me. and hope to see you at the uh, Jazz and Music Festival. I hope so. Thank you for watching. If you haven't gotten your tickets now, I recommend you get on it and get them. This does sell out most years, but you're fine right now, but go ahead and get those tickets. Thanks for watching.